Hey, my name's John and I'm a human doing. What am I doing today? Putting a concrete countertop on my workbench. Let's go check it out. Welcome back everybody. Please like and subscribe and ask any questions you have down below. I'll get to them as quickly as I possibly can. This is a project I've been looking forward to doing for a while. I really needed to get this countertop done in my garage. So the countertop I'm making is called a pour in place countertop versus what uh, you'll, you'll often see online, which is a precast. Uh, so this is pour in place. I think it's the easiest way you can make a concrete countertop. And what you're doing is making the mold on top of the cabinet that you have, in my case, my, my garage cabinet. For the base of this mold, I'll be using half inch plywood that I happen to have kicking around the shop. I had to make it in two pieces because my cabinet was a little bit longer than eight feet and my sheets weren't quite long enough. So again, I did do it in two pieces. I just made sure the joint was on top of a structural portion of the cabinet just to keep it from flexing. I should also note that when I made it, I did want a, an overhang on the countertop. So I left three quarters of an inch on both sides. And once these pieces were cut, all I had to do was fasten them directly to the, the cabinet. Now I'm using inch and a half flooring screws for this, but just about anything you have lying around or kicking around will, will work just fine. This is not a critical, uh, critical step. Uh, I will make note that the only, the overhang I should say is only on three sides on the back side that I'm just starting to screw in here. Uh, I, there's no overhang on the back because it's being flush against the wall, but on either side and the front, there is an overhang. Now this next step here is certainly not mandatory. I'm putting vapor barrier over top of the plywood and I'm doing that simply because I want to uh, make the, the countertop easily removable if needed. It's going to be pretty heavy when it's finished. I mean, it should be roughly 250 pounds. So if, if I want to move the cabinet around, I thought, you know what, if, if I could take the countertop off a little bit more easily and this will keep it from, from sticking, if I hadn't put it on, uh, the cement would uh, adhere to the plywood. And now with that top piece wrapped and ready, I can start working on the nosing for the, the countertop. So the first thing is just to rip up again some of this old plywood that I have kicking around. You can use plywood, you can use almost anything. I would stay away from standard MDF. A melamine seems to be a really popular choice because it's relatively smooth. Uh, I'll also be using another type of material called Xterra, which is an exterior MDF, but I'll get into that a little bit later. I mentioned earlier about the three quarter inch overhang I had on that top panel over the cabinet. So three quarter inches sort of longer on all sides except for the back. I'm using that three quarter inch overhang to fasten those strips that I just finished cutting. So those strips there are two and a quarter inches wide and it's being made from the same half inch plywood. Again, it's just scrap plywood I happen to have around and I'm fastening, fastening those with drywall screws. The screws don't matter. Just make sure it's nice and strong and secure. And another point I should, uh, I should note is that when you do make a joint, you want that joint to be caulked or in my case, I'm using silicone, uh, silicone caulking, but you want to make sure that you have a, a relatively watertight joint because when you do pour the concrete, there's water in there and it will seep out if it isn't a uh, mostly watertight seal. And of course, I'm just double checking my measurements just to make sure that the, the spacing and the, the reveal is exactly the same length all the way along. So now I'm working on the front of the mold, which is gonna be made from Xterra, which is an exterior grade MDF. It's not as common, uh, obviously, as regular MDF, and it costs a lot more. It's about four times more, three times more than standard MDF maybe, but uh, it's an awesome product. Water has essentially no impact on it. It doesn't absorb water in any way. Uh, that what I've seen so far and I'm fastening it with just with carpenter's glue uh, and brad nails because I didn't want to screw it MDF it, it does react to screws the same way MDF does when you're doing it on the edge so it would sort of uh, balloon out so I chose with brad nails because it would keep its shape properly and the glue will also act as a sealant just kind of like the the silicone did earlier so here's my way of trying to explain kind of what the shape is going to be like or how you can you can vision it. This is my, my little finger drawing of what the concrete will look like when the mold is removed. So my name is Simon and I like to do drawings and that's exactly what it looks like when it'll be removed, the, the little cross hatched area. And here I'm just putting on some edging, same way I did before. One note I should make is you want to make sure you're overlapping your edges. You don't want to have your joints all in the same location just to make sure it's nice and strong. And like the front edge, I used carpenter's glue and inch and a quarter brad nails just to fasten it in. 
and that should make it more than watertight enough. But just to be sure that I'm everything uh, that that it's watertight, I did silicone all the way around the edges, anywhere that I thought that it could possibly leak. So you just want to have a double check before you're pouring, just because you don't want to have a mess and you don't want to waste any of the concrete. So just have a double check. Make sure anything that you think can leak, just give it some caulking. And I'm using silicone caulking. Make sure you get that nice and tight as a drum, and it'll hold your concrete and not make a mess. And one final uh, precaution, I guess we could call it, you want to put some kind of mold release on any of the wood edges that are going to be removed and the end. So all these edges will be, will be pulled off. And just to make it easier, in this case, I'm spraying them with WD-40. It's a silicone version of WD-40, a silicone sealant. But you could use anything. You could use cooking oil it, or the, the spray cooking oil would, would be fine. And I'm just rubbing it down just to make sure that these pieces uh, come off nice and easy, which you will see in the future, they definitely come off nice and easy. Now that all the molds are ready for, for the cement mix, I want to make sure that I'm prepared to do those, that, that mixing of the product. So I have my six bags of mortar mix. This is hydraulic cement. It is a rapid setting product, 15 minutes. But to give me more time, I've got set, which is basically, it's just a retarder. It is going to take that and basically double the, uh, the drying time, which is going to make it much easier to work because I'm going to be doing one, one bucket at a time or one bag at a time. And I'm also adding flow control. This is going to make it, well, it's going to make it easier to pour. So it's, it'll make it more like a liquid without having to add more water. The more water you add, the lower the strength is going to be and the more chance you're going to have of cracking. So I've got three buckets. One is an empty bucket that's going to be for mixing. One is another bucket for cleaning the, the tools that I'm using. And the third bucket is full of water just so that I can, um, I don't have to go out and get water uh, to the tap. And I've pre-measured four liters, which is how much I'm going to be adding to the mix here. The most you can add is 4.7 liters, which is five quarts. You don't want to exceed that at all. The less water you add, the higher strength you're going to get from this product. So less water is better. And with the flow control, you are going to get almost like a pancake batter mix when you're done. As you can see, I'll be using the Rapid Set brand mortar mix. And that is a hydraulic cement. It's an extremely strong cement. It dries fairly quickly. Um, because of that, I am using a set, which is a retarder. And the flow control, which will just uh, allow me to use less water, but still have a pourable finish. And this is my attempt at mixing. I am a bit of a slob. So I did put a piece of plywood down to try to save the floor. Although I will say, Swiss Tracks, it is so easy to keep clean. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. So I'm super glad I've got Swiss Tracks down there because it does, it does clean up really easily even after this concrete mess of mine that I'm about to make. So I pour in my water first. And then I slowly mix in the, mi the, uh, the concrete mix. And you want to get it... Uh, so that you've basically got it all mixed together. And you're going to find that it, it's, it's a relatively thick consistency. As you can see here, it's, it, it definitely looks thick. But as soon as I put in the flow control, I'm putting the set in at the same time. The set has, uh, has nothing to do or it has no impact on the consistency. But that flow control, it's going to turn it into, like I said, pancake batter. And it's, it becomes super pourable, which for concrete countertops, is perfect. Uh, because this is such a high strength concrete mix, uh, I'm not using any rebar of any kind. I spoke to the manufacturer and they said it really isn't necessary for this job. It's an inch and a quarter thick and they said cracking is, is fairly unusual uh, for this particular product in this application. So I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. And I will never be one to say no to someone who wants to help. So I was lucky enough to have my oldest daughter come out and say she wanted to help me pour some of these, these countertops. I said, absolutely. So she is going to help spread out that mix for me. And she's also going to come along in a moment and try to help remove some air bubbles. So I gave her a hammer and I said, just tap the edges. I did go over these edges a little bit uh, more vigorously afterwards to make sure we got rid of those air bubbles. You don't want to try to minimize any air bubbles you have in the mix. And once I pour in enough... I can then, uh, I use a piece of, again, just spare plywood that I had to screed the top just to make sure that's a relatively smooth finish and uh, keep everything uh, relatively uh, level and even. So once that was all done and set, I left it for about half a day. Uh, I left in the evening and I came back the next morning. Uh, the concrete itself was dry within a couple hours, but because it was later in the evening, I just left it overnight. So I'm just going to remove the screws 
so that I can start to remove the edges on the mold. And because I, uh, I mentioned earlier that I used a mold release, that WD-40, these edges pop off extremely easy. There was no sticking and I had no issues at all pulling them, pulling them apart. So I was uh, quite happy with the result there. So definitely use that mold release regardless of what it is. You can see how easy it pops off. There's no sticking of any kind. So it did a, the mold release definitely did its job. So once I got all those pieces removed, you can see the, I'll call it semi-finished product. The, the concrete itself is still not fully cured. So there's some discoloration that, that will go away as it dries, but that edge is really quite smooth. The exterior did an exceptional job. Uh, with that edge. And as far as the sanding goes, I don't have any specific tools for sanding concrete, so I'm just using my standard woodworking tools, uh, in this case my, my belt sander. And I only belt sanded for about five minutes. This here is uh, 80 grit sandpaper, which isn't very aggressive for for this particular job, but it's it, it turned out quite well. And like I said, I only sanded with the belt sander for about five minutes. The rest was done with an orbital sander and uh, like a random orbit center that you see in my hands here. And that was for about 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. And that's with a 120 grit. But the it actually sanded quite well. Not as, as nice as wood, of course, but uh, it, it took to sanding well. I did try a little bit of wet sanding, but my tools just uh, the tools and the pads that I had aren't really set up for, for wet sanding in, in this way. So you'd be uh, better off to get the, the proper sanding pads if you do want to have uh, what I would call a perfect finish for concrete, but in this case it, it turned out well. I wanted to give you a shot uh, from underneath so you can see where that three quarter inch uh, overhang was originally that we put on with that plywood. So the, the, the concrete countertop is an inch and a quarter thick, but the edges all look like they're an inch and three quarters thick. So that's, that's a pretty neat trick and you don't have to use quite as much uh, material. So after about 20, 25 minutes of sanding with that orbital, this is the finish that I have, you can see here. This is not the finish that I was intending initially. I wanted a more consistent color, but after that small amount of sanding, like I mentioned, 20 minutes or so, I could see, well, you see what you're getting right here. It's, it's a very industrial look and I decided to stop. I didn't want to create that perfect finish because I thought, you know what, this I think suits the garage a little bit more than what I was originally intending. So I'm really happy with the result. I do have to still put a sealer on, but you can't put your sealers on immediately. You should wait roughly a month before you do that. So I'm going to give this about a month to fully cure and then I'll apply a sealer. I don't think I'll do a video for that because you're really, you're just rolling on sealer. If anybody wants to, by all means, comment below and I'll, I'll show how I do that. But that's a pretty simple process. But yeah, this is the finished result. Let me know what you think down below. Like and subscribe the video. Hopefully I have more great content coming to you. And thanks for watching.